Okay, so we solved the problem in a very detailed way the first time, and we said we were going to cut up the, the rod into an infinite number of parts, and we wrote it as a limit of sums, and then we converted the limit of sums into an integral. Now, for every problem you solve, you're not going to do this. We just did it this way the first time so that you can see how things work. But when you solve problems, you're not going to do this every time to cut it up into 11 parts and then make the 11 go to infinity. You can if you want to, but it's not really the best way to do it. So in this, these slides, we want to illustrate how you would solve this problem very simply in a few simple steps. The first step, identify an element of charge, dq, somewhere on the line. So this blue part. Now, don't take it to be at the beginning and don't take it to be at the end, because if you take it to the beginning, then you'll say that the distance of the element to point P is A, and at the end it will be A plus L. No, take it to be anywhere in between, and define the distance between the point P and the element to be X. So this is the first step. Now this element of charge DQ produces an electric field at point P, which we call DE. So the step two is to actually find what DE is. DE is the electric field due to this element of charge, as if this DQ element is a point charge. So you get KE times the charge over the distance squared. The distance is X. So you get X squared. So this is the second step. Then the third step, we want to integrate after this. So we need to re re replace the variable here and make it the same as X. So we have to change DQ and write it as lambda DX. have um, DE in a way that we can integrate very easily. We have the variable of integration is x and we have the variable here dx and lambda is a constant in this problem, ke is a constant, so we're ready to integrate. So the fourth step, fourth step is to do the integration and the limits of the integration are determined by finding out which, where is the first element located, it's located here, distance a away, so that's why you have a. And then the last element is located over here, a distance a plus l away. So that's why we put a plus l. So this is the way you would solve a problem uh, when you're doing homework or an exam problem. You're not going to cut it up into an infinite number of elements and write down the limit of sums. Now to do the integration, it's pretty easy. In this problem, ke and lambda are constants, so they go out. So basically we want to integrate x to the minus 2 dx. And this integration is just x to the minus 1 over minus 1, and then you substitute the upper limit a plus l and a, you get this expression. If you simplify it by taking a common denominator, you get this final result. So this is the electric field, the total electric field at point P due to the rod. As a last step, if you want, if it's required, you can always replace in this problem only, remember lambda is not always equal to q over l, it's only lambda is equal to q over l for a uniform charge distribution. So in this problem, we have a uniform charge distribution, so we can do this. Substitute lambda to be q over l. The l here will cancel with this l, and you get this final result for the electric field in terms of the charge, the total charge on the of the rod.